Hey, this is Chris from DSX Machina and the Dice Tower, and I'm with Jonathan from Goom Games. There we go. <laughs> We're going to talk about his new game that's going to go on Kickstarter on April 17th. April 17th. April 17th for Kickstarter called No Escape, and we're going to take a look at it right now. So, John, tell me about this game. This is a tile laying maze building game with uh, take that elements and roll and move. The whole idea of it is uh, you're on a space station that's about to explode, and there's only one escape pod left. Those damn space stations. I know, They're I know, they always, keep exploding on you. We need you. to stop building space stations. So, there's one escape pod left, but unfortunately, there's all of you. And the escape pod only holds one person. Of course. So you're trying to find the escape pod before anyone else does. Um, and everyone else builds a maze uh, as they're going. And they, of course, they're trying to extend the maze in front of all the other players while trying to find the shortest path themselves. Right. Um, to find the escape pod, it's literally just get off the board. So the first person to get off the board has found the escape pod and wins. Pretty straightforward. So it's Pretty a, straightforward. So it's a competitive game about trying to escape we were all friends, but now there's only one escape. It's all basically fun for yourself. So, sorry, honey. I know I love you, but well, I love my life more. You weren't even all friends to begin oh, with. Oh, we were. <laughs> you just all showed up at the space station as brand new recruits. You didn't even get your safety training yet, and the core explodes. On the so, you don't even know where anything on the station is yet. The core explodes. I, damn those cores. It's like you think you would have learned from every other science fiction movie that's been made since the 80s, always have redundancies, and have more than one escape pod. But that's like the Titanic, then it's never enough. So it's ages 13 and up, two to eight players, 30 minutes. Uh, this is, you said this is temporary box art, but this is actually looking, this is fantastic. This is uh, almost complete, actually. It was, uh, we got this quickly done up from where it was at. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were still a few issues with it that just had to be corrected, but this is like 90% of where it was, where it's supposed to be in the end. Uh, the other side of that. And uh, try to find the exit. And all you need to do is get out. No points. It's whoever gets out first. It's whoever gets out first. Um, some of the stretch goals that we actually have for the Kickstarter mm -hmm. is actually a co-op version of the game. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to find an escape pod, you're trying to uh, find station codes to shut off the self-destruct system. Yeah, we have uh, three alternative versions of play mm -hmm. that uh, are all going to be stretch goals on the Kickstarter to mm -hmm. unlock. Um, if we get uh, them all unlocked, then they'll all be available in the core box. So we're going to go through a quick playthrough. So this is obviously the central board. It's not like a central tile. It's actually a very big tile. Um, that, that's a center point there. And we have our classic meeples. Yeah, it's actually a double-sided board as well. Okay. Depending on how many players you're going with. Right. So this side is for two to four players. Right. The opposite side is for four to eight. Wow, players. you go to eight players in this game? Yes. Oh, so it, was par it can be a party game. Yeah. Holy crap, I'm impressed. All right, cool. So, um, you choose the starting board based on how many players you have. Right. Everyone gets a hand of three tiles. Okay, similar. So yeah, we see. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Cool. And then the tiles are split. Oh, up. some of them actually don't have just uh, directions. Some of them actually have stuff. Yeah. So see. you have actions, and then your maze tiles. Right. Um, so during a standard turn, a player has the option of playing one action tile from their hand. Right. They have to play a maze tile. Right. Um, then they have the option of using one of their energy tokens that they have, right. which gives them a bonus to movement. Cool. Cool. Then they grab the dice, roll them, and move that far. All right, so let's go through a turn. Let's say blue goes first. Okay. So and let's, let's say this is your hand, and do I draw three of my own? Yep. I go, so this, let's and say right I would keep it very much concealed, like playing lanterns. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just do that. So that's my hand. That's actually hand. A, a perfect hand for you to have, too, because those, so, those are some of the special So I assume cards. that's going to be a teleportation? Yep. And then this is a... Control center. Control center, cool. And then this is just a regular old hallway. This is a regular hallway, but uh, it's special in the fact that you get to add extra things to it depending on how the game goes. So oh, you can that's open up sweet. a new hatchway on this Yeah, so, kind so of it's time. not just a regular tile. We also have these half tiles as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then I got my little tokens there. Okay, so let's say you're going first and you're blue. And let's say I'll be yellow. And we'll move these other two out for now. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so we, so you go first is blue and that'll be yellow. 
Okay, so how it would go mm -hmm. is, let's say, well, this one can't be played yet because there would be nothing else on the, out on yeah, the board. Yeah, nothing, nothing to apply to, yeah. Um, so I would choose a maze tile in my hand to play, so let's just put this out here. Right. Um, I decide I want to use one of my energy tokens, so right. I just flip it over. Right. I now have plus one to my movement. Okay. Roll the dice and move that far. And of course, these aren't the actual <laughs> dice. No, I imagine not. Um, so these are just temporary dice. They'll for be it. awesome dice when we get production. Yeah. Okay. And so this would be a movement of five. For right. It. Plus one. Uh, exactly. These dice are special in the fact that each of them only goes up to three. Oh, okay. That's why you're going to use regular dice. So these are okay. So we have a couple ones, a couple twos, and a couple threes. Yeah. Is it even? Is it one one two two three three? One one two two three. Okay, three. so it's even, Steven. Okay. And the reason for that is it uh, equalizes movement a lot more. Um, yeah. oh, and I, it I means that. that there's no chance of getting less than two movement. Okay. So you move your amount then. So right. because I've put something over here, I'm going to go this way. So move. If I were to get one more, so let's say that I had five total of six with right. this, right. I'd hit the intersection. Right. I'd actually have to immediately choose which way I'm going. Okay. Um, that's important because you can't Even if, yeah, turn yeah. around in this game. Ah, oh. so you can't backtrack. You can't backtrack. Okay. Are this are the meeples going to show a facing other than just? Uh, or yes. Is... So they actually have a flat side, which is the uh, backpack of the character. Right. And the rounded side, which is his arms. Ah, oh, okay. So that's that's the front. Okay. Good. So when he gets to the intersection, he has to then make a decision of which direction he's going to go. Yeah. Okay. So in mine, uh, so do I, I have to place a tile first. Yeah. Right? You, you always finish your turn as well by picking up a new tile. Yeah. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So let's say, uh, you say this is the control center. Yeah. And what does the control center do? So the control center, when you get to it, you get to choose one of two things. Right. First is if all your energy tokens mm -hmm. were used up, mm -hmm. or even just some of them, right. you could flip them back to the green side so they're useful again. Okay, cool. The other option is actually taking these half tiles right. and putting one of them out on an appropriately marked Open space. tile. Yeah. And just opening up a new path you can go on. Okay. All right. So let's say I would do, um, I would do that and put that there, right? Yep. And then I would roll the dice. And give me self five. Now, when you use this, obviously before you would use before that. You yeah. roll, so there's yeah. my front, get my, my my pudge. I'm I'm a little a little fat, unfortunately. One, two, or is it one, two, three, four, five? So yeah. that's my turn. And now I grab a tile, which shouldn't be exposed, but we'll just do that for just description purposes. So yeah. now it's now it's your turn. So one actually quick thing that I okay. want to show you that's uh, very important. Mm -hmm. If you had decided to go the same way as me, oh okay, and you got yeah. five, yeah. You would actually have landed on the same space. Right. But in this game, you push your opponent forward. Okay, so not necessarily the greatest idea if you're following them, because you can actually help them along. You can end up helping them. The now, if I had put this tile down, like, see, here, could I have then teleported to this tile? Uh, this you can only teleport to, you can't teleport from. Oh, okay, so it's a destination. It's, this one is a destination. Not a source. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. All right, so that's back to you, so it's your turn then. So, uh, and then the last thing is if you'd used an energy token right. and had landed on me, instead right. of pushing me, right. you would go in front of me. Ah, so there is a way That's of, the other advantage. I can block it. you, and then you can't go forward, and you can't go back. Yeah. Right? But you can make my life a living hell by putting a, a really annoying tile in front of me. Exactly. Okay, so now go, go on your turn then. So let's say that I want to use the structural damage right now. There's mm -hmm. enough tiles out. Mm -hmm. So I use structural damage, and right. it allows me to and Structural switch. damage, we'll see here. Uh, change the position of any one tile on the board with any other. Both placements must still be legal. Okay. So in that case, these are the only two tiles out. So yeah. what I do is I just simply... Swap them out. Swap them out. I will do that. I'll flip it over to give myself a plus one. Can you, can you flip all of them over if you want You can to? only flip one over a one time. One over a time. Okay. All right. Um, so let's say if I put this tile here, yep, that means you you could teleport, but you have to teleport back to space. That's correct, right? So I'll do that, and then I can roll my dice. It goes six to seven, so I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm getting better at this. 
I am amazing. Oh, so, so I have a little tactical update. Play two maze tiles this turn. Okay. So I could play that and then place both of these right. and basically so, okay. clear my entire you, you, hand. So if you had, yep. like, okay, okay, so if I was here and I moved five, do I have to go two and then stop my move there or do I turn around and take the remaining movements? You turn around, take your remaining movements, do the actions. You can do the actions and then do your remaining movements, whichever order you want to do. Okay. So, I'll, so when you hit this, I can recharge all of mine or just one? All of them. Okay, so if I do that and I roll, for example, I only get... I get four, right? So one, well, two... Well, you get three. Four. One, two, three. I thought that would give you... Oh, yeah, plus, yeah, so three. So one, two, th three. So I'm there. So it wasn't very useful. Actually, I could have played that. I could have done that one instead. But I'll hold off on that. So I'll grab this tile, which is another lengthening tile, and then it's off to you, sir. A yep. energy token, because right. the other thing is here. Right. You'll notice it has the same symbol. So when you go back, you can get, you can also reset. You can reset, but because it's the yellow one, yeah. you can only reset. You can't place one of these out. Right. Gotcha. So that's a full on. So one, one two, two, three. three. Four, five, six, right. and because I hit here, now it's up to me. I I'm going to play that, okay. so I can play two tiles, right? Yep. And then I can go here. Yep. And say there. Yep. Okay. Then I can take the die, and then I'll, I'll flip mine over because I'm going to get them all back. And I get a uh, four, five. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and I get the reset. Is it, do you play until the last tile gets put down and then you move up? Oh, I, you just have to get off the board. You just get off the board. I just, so literally, if I get off this board, even with these tiles still here, I win the game. Yeah. Okay. If the tiles run out, the tiles are actually your countdown until the station explodes. Okay, so there is type of a, you can say, well, I'm not getting off the station, but none of you guys are getting off the station either. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. On so, okay. this one here. So it has to be, so it cannot be on this one because there's something blocking it. Can't be on this one because there's something blocking it. So it has to be on something like that one. Yeah. Okay. And you'll notice that the little uh, hazard pattern here mm -hmm. aligns well, Matt, with the hazard pattern. Oh, so, pattern okay. So, that, so we see the hazard pattern on there. So that's how we, okay, good. So just a rule there. So it can't be on one of those, can't be on one of these. Can only be so, on one of those. So obviously, I want to extend your new mace that you have. Right. Keep going down my path. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. Okay. All right. So for me, obviously I only have one tile to put down. Yeah. Now what if I have like three action tiles? If you have three action tiles, you mm -hmm. still get the option of playing one of them. Right. Then you have to discard the rest. Right. And start flipping over tiles into the discard until right. you find a maze tile to play. Right. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that there. Um, complete place to replace any my style. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to roll. I'm only going to get two, unfortunately, so I'm going to go there. New tiles. Okay, so I have a toolkit, draw two tiles, play one and keep the other. Another one, switch, switch locations with another player. You do not move this turn. Okay, okay. So, and these have to, once again, are all played on my turn. Yeah. Okay, so behind me. Back to you. I mean, on the hazard ones, I have the hazard ones. Yeah. The ones we put these extensions on. Yeah. Gotcha. So that does me no good right now. Okay. Hallway collapse, replace a tile um, with one in my hand. Right. Um, I don't really want to replace anything that I have in front of me right, right. now. And I'm happy with the path that you have in front of you. Right. right. So I'm just going to extend your path again. Okay. And... Hope for a high roll. Hope for a high roll. No, so he has three. One, two, three. Right. So I'm, of course, going to be the ass and go switch locations. Yeah. Do not move this turn. So I'm going to switch with you. So I go there, and you go all the way over here. That's a mean thing to do. Um, then so I, I, I go place the maze tile, the maze on my hand, turn your piece to face in the direction of your choice. Done. Okay, so back to you because I don't roll because I that was part of my actions that I can't roll yeah. so it's now back to you so now this is a perfect time for me to use unlocked hat or sorry hallway claps mm -hmm. so hallway claps replace an, any existing maze tile with a maze tile in your hand right so I'm going to replace this one right with, this with that one hand. Yeah, exactly. smart so move this goes yeah. back to my hand now oh okay goes back to your hand okay but you don't place a tile because that oh, was your. That sorry, was... and I do actually still place it. There tile. you go. And... Just making sure. <laughs> like, I'm all with you. So I have four movement. One, two, three, 
four. Okay, so back, so you can fill. I'm gonna draw the two tiles, and I get to, I'm gonna keep this one, obviously, because I don't want to keep that one. Nope, you actually keep all of them. Oh, I, you oh. don't have to discard. Oh, I thought, play one and keep the other. Oh, yep. okay, I'm sorry, I, I mistake that. Immediately play to force the current player to re-roll their dice. Um, hand it to another, turn your piece facing the direction. Well, I'm just gonna place uh, that one to at least give you an extension. I'm gonna flip this over and see if I get a really good roll because a six yeah. would almost get me. Yes! And one, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven. seven. I so win! I pod. won! Oh, that is beginner's luck. I like this. This is very interesting because yeah, it's, it's, it's got to take that mechanic, but it's actually a core element. It's not one of those things where you're doing something and then somebody screws you. The whole game is quite literally extending and trying to outsmart it. So when someone see, he, uh, uh, hears the mechanic take that, it's usually really mean and trolling. But here it's, it's, it's integrated into the mechanic so um, perfectly that you kind of don't notice that the whole base of the mechanic is to make everyone's life a living hell. So it's the so we were talking about Subterra. This is the opposite yes. of Subterra. It's quite literally the mirror opposite. You're all working together to find the one tile, and here you're trying to screw everyone else from getting to the exit, so you can as well. That's really cool. So obviously we're going to stress that these are prototype cards, although I'm actually really impressed at the quality. You were talking to me about how you built them. This is really good. I was expecting... Um, this is actually really nice. The quality of these is pretty solid. I mean, if this is if this if I came if I took this out of the box, I wouldn't think that it was a prototype. I thought I, this is exactly how I, w I I would want them to look. Obviously, these are going to be more solid tokens, and the dice will be uh, uh, would be normal. Are these meeples pretty much close, or are they going to get changed? These are the uh, these are the correct meeples that will be in the game, right? Um, and uh, the idea for them is specifically that they have a very obvious front facing. A, a front and facing and a back facing, yeah. Um, the one difference that might be happening with them, um, again, it will be a stretch goal, is getting uh, them screen printed to make it even more obvious. Well, I know that sometimes you, you can like make, yeah, you can have either a meeple that's a bit more customized or um, uh, put like a sticker on them so you know yeah. that's like, actually a dude walking forward. Yeah. Uh, what are, what are, so you were talking about the stretch goals for uh, cooperative. What are some of the uh, other ideas that you've been having? Well, one of the other stretch goals, which is, again, a different uh, gameplay that we have, right. is um, essentially a hidden roles element. So some of the players are actually the saboteurs for the station. Oh, okay, so it, it becomes a one against others? It's uh, everyone has different roles, right? So you have the saboteur. Oh, character cards, yeah. Character. Cards. Oh, okay, I like character cards. Those are I love. I love individuality. That's an awesome idea. So you have the saboteurs, where their whole idea is they're the ones that actually sabotage the station, and they're trying to keep everyone on the station because that's what their job is. Mm -hmm. Then you have the engineers that are trying to collect. Uh, um, some specific uh, unlock tokens right. um, to uh, stop the self-destruct of the station. Right. Uh, then you have a bunch of civilians where their whole thing is they're just trying to survive. They really don't care if the saboteurs win or the right. engineers win. They just want to get they out. They just want to get out. Yeah. So they're really the wild card element of the whole thing. This is an right. one. Is that, is that like, it's like you go into one and you can... All four sides are exits. Wow. That's almost, so, that's, almost this, a good, yeah, that's almost a good thing to put down for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the ones that usually you'll want to try and put down for yourself. Yeah. Because it's very hard for people Anyone to, to block all the extra. Because eventually you're fi you'll find something yeah. that'll get you out of it. It's and still, yeah. it's one of the few ones where you can also go all the way around and then turn around and go back the way you were Yeah, because you can just, you can just continue doing a circle. So it's very buried alive. Target player does not move next turn. Ooh, that's, that's nasty. I can see this game just being complete and utter chaos in an eight-player game. It can become very chaotic in an eight-player game. We can see an eight-player game. We can see all the exits people can end up taking. So, wow. What's very interesting as well is uh, when I've playtested this game with uh, with large amounts of people, mm -hmm. there always ends up being some people who have the opportunity to win the game, but just like playing it so much they just start extending it even more because that's just my girlfriend so you want to talk to she will literally she will play an eight player version of this and where she will burn through every tile in that game and she'll do it for three hours and she'll just take it as a satisfaction like because once again 
even though you're trying to find a way out, you've also created this lattice uh, that you can find. Um, and uh, cause you're going to that co-op, finding these extra tiles that you have to then hunt down and find, and then you have to get to it, and then you got to turn around and find other ones, and so, and then in that situation, you'd have to find the escape yeah. at that point. So a cooperative variant would be very, very cool, because it would still be mechanically different than what we've seen before. That's really smart. By the way, um, do you have an idea what the costs are going to be for the? Uh, it's uh, going to be forty-five Canadian, which works out to approximately thirty-five US. Oh, that's really inexpensive. That's really nice. I mean, I've uh, I've rallied about all these Kickstarters. They're like one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars and a hundred pounds, and they're full of miniatures and not much of a game. And that's very reasonable. Forty-four dollars is. Uh, I'm I'm gonna yeah. I can see myself getting behind that totally. Well, awesome. I think I have more than enough stuff. I want to see the manual here. Very cool. Like, very simple. Four pages. Four Nothing. pages. Um, there's going to be a little bit extended on to it, just to clarify a few oh, yeah, things that have yeah. come up. But, yeah, it, it's going to be four pages for the core game. Any, any ideas of, of, of having other tiles other than uh, this one and the, and the teleport? Anything else that's going to be unique? Um, there are a few ideas for some more uh, slightly unique... Uh, slightly unique tiles. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are stretch goal oriented. Oh, cool. Um, some of them are actually a combination of the two of these. Yeah. Um, or actually completely different variations of these. Like, for instance, these are both dead ends. Right. Um, but there's uh, a variation where it's going to actually be that instead of using them, you can just carry on straight through. Oh. Again, it's going to go live on April 17th, 17th. Uh, for a very reasonable price. 44 Canadian, 30... Uh, 45 Canadian, 45 Canadian. Uh, approximately 35 US. 35 US, very inexpensive. And uh, I'll, I'll be covering this in the future. All right, guys, 